The big screen that fits in your hand. That's what the LG G6 is marketed as. Personally, not so much for me because I have extremely small hands, but the phone combines neat software tricks to make it usable one-handed, and I especially like how you can customize the navigation bar so that you can pull down the notification bar with just a click. Now in the hand, the phone feels very premium and robust made out of glass and metal. It's not the most slender looking phone, but it's still pretty lightweight. But because it's made of Gorilla Glass 5 on the back, Gorilla Glass 4 on the camera and Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, you do get some wear and tear occasionally and that wear and tear isn't consistent throughout the phone. But day to day I don't see any problems that you might face using the phone. Outdoor visibility is also decent but could have been better and I found myself taking a few days to get used to the fingerprint sensor which also doubles as the power button because it wasn't indented like my other previous phone. But it's plenty fast and I like its placement and I've grown used to it with the days I've used the phone. And at the end of the day, if you're worried about the smudges that the phone might pick up because it's made out of glass, just take it for a wash under the sink. The IP68 certification on the phone is really a nice touch from LG because of the dusty weather we get here, or if you just fancy a swim in the hot sun of Dubai. That being said, don't scrutinize me for keeping the screen protector and plastics around the phone because they really come in handy for scratch resistance, like here, near the tactile volume rockers where the plastic took the blow, leaving my phone good as new. So let's get to user experience. The 18x9 5.7 inch IPS Quad HD screen is really the selling point of this phone. The very minimal bezels make it a great media companion and those corners are kind of trippy. If you can find content suitable for the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, the phone's colors and overall performance is gonna blow your mind. Viewing angles are also very good, but sadly, most media these days is played back at the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So you're gonna be stuck with black bars on pretty much any video that you watch on the internet. App scaling too is unsupported for the YouTube application, so you can't really scale in like say on the Samsung Galaxy S8 for example, but you can scale other applications. So there's the benefit on that front, but if you stumble across a Cinemascope movie trailer for example, it's gonna look like you're watching it on a 5 inch display, really taking away from the experience. But if you're the kind of person who likes to use multi-window a lot, the screen ratio should be a welcome change, especially for those OCD people who like to have apps in halves. You know who you are. Moving over to the bottom of the phone, that's where you find the mono speaker. I don't think it sounds phenomenal and that has a lot to do with the IP certification that the phone has. And here you also find the primary microphone that I feel is a bit too close to my natural pinky resting position so my voice didn't carry through to the other side on calls. Yeah, who really uses calls on phones anyways? I think both of these problems can be addressed by using a pair of headphones and and thankfully the 3.5mm headphone jack is here to stay, but unfortunately this phone doesn't support quad DAC like other LG G6 units around the world. Quite a bummer. Now let's talk some performance. I mentioned the software helping me out here and there, and that's really the case. It's based on Android 7.0 Nougat and can be themed to your liking. You also get this cool little puzzle unlock alarm that really did a great job of waking me up for university, but I feel like the same software is a bit too much for the hardware. The Snapdragon 821 processor on board as well as 4GB of RAM are good, but they're noticeably slower and you can see that for yourself in the speed tests I've made with this phone compared to the HTC U Ultra as well as the Huawei Mate 9 Pro. The experience isn't as smooth as I would have liked it to be, but the memory management is good nonetheless. Even 2D and 3D games work well, and Asphalt 8 in this case works really nicely, but the phone heats up near the top when you game for extensive periods of time. And the top is where you're gonna find the cameras. The G6 comes with a dual 13 megapixel setup as the primary camera, as well as the 5 megapixel selfie camera. 
I've been very impressed with the camera in general, especially in the nighttime shots. Day shots can seem a bit artificial with over the top software processing and pictures with blurry backgrounds are hard to take, but that wide angle 13 megapixel sensor really impressed me. Normally I'd have to duck and weave to take a picture of the Burj Khalifa, but with this camera it's almost like a cheat code. It works even underwater, but unfortunately my pool didn't have any fishes, so I couldn't take pictures of that. And while 4K video comes out good looking most of the time, and colors are accurate, it can sometimes be unstable even with optical image stabilization turned on. Unfortunately, the front selfie camera just didn't impress me. Its performance in the day is good with natural looking colors and good dynamic range, and it even has a wide angle mode of its own, but it doesn't quite get detailed enough as I would like it to do so, and its performance at night is pretty atrocious blurry and pretty much unusable. So then that pretty much leaves us with battery. On board you find the 3300 mAh cell that isn't user replaceable like previous LG flagships and over my usage I got around 6 hours of screen on time consistently over mixed usage on data, Wi-Fi with Bluetooth turned on for the whole day. I also had the always on display turned on to see how it fared on an IPS display as opposed to the more power efficient AMOLED panels. Fast charging via the USB-C port takes just over 2 hours which I think is pretty impressive and unlike the G6s in the USA, there's no wireless charging option on this one but it does come with a dual SIM slot. Nonetheless, if you're a really heavy user, expect to plug this phone in sometime during mid-afternoon. The phone retails in Dubai for 2,599 dirhams and comes at a default 32GB of storage with additional microSD expansion. I think even with the S8 or the S8 Plus and the Huawei phones out, the LG G6 is quite a strong choice when you consider build and camera, but in terms of user experience, some refinement is definitely on the cards. Tell me what you guys think about the phone in the comments below and stick around for more videos by subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Adios.